Hello, everyone. We're going to wait a few more minutes before we get started. Amy, whenever you're ready to kick us off. I think we're going to hold for a couple more people because like normally we'll have like uh, as many as like 27 to 30 in here. And right now I'm seeing 14. So I'm going to give everybody a few more minutes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, of course. No worries. Hi everyone. Excellent. Okay. We were we were holding a little bit to be able to see like who else is gonna join. So yeah, all good. Okay. I will I will now kick us off. We're four minutes in, so welcome, welcome to your TOC meeting. Welcome to your normal LF antitrust policy news. Welcome to Meeting Logistics. You have made it to the meeting. Well done. Or you're watching online later. Also good. Um, TOC members present today is going to be tracked over in the TOC Public Working Doc. And here's our agenda today. It's annual review day. Hooray! Awesome. Thanks yep. so much, Amy. <laughs> Go ahead. Kick it off. So let's get started with Pixie. Um, are there any Pixie uh, members, contributors, maintainers on the call? I yeah. want to turn it yep. over to them awesome come on in oh yeah. cool you want us cool. to go ahead with that yes there you um, go okay okay great so pixie is a observability tool for kubernetes that leverages the ebpf to collect telemetry data uh we're currently a cncf sandbox project um at, at a high level you know we've been seeing some pretty steady growth and contributions and continued project growth happening um we are actively working on adding uh, additional maintainers to the project, uh, both from, you know, within, um, so uh, stepping back a second, Pixie was built by Pixie Labs, uh, which was acquired by New Relic uh, a couple years ago. And Pixie was contributed over to the CNCF after our acquisition. Uh, the entire Pixie team is still very actively working on Pixie. And we have quite a few external contributors uh, right now, we're working on expanding our maintainers to include folks from outside of New Relic um, and also to, to broaden our uh, governance process to include folks from outside of New Relic. So we want to get to be a good vendor neutral status. Uh, right now, our governance is pretty much controlled by me and Michelle, and we'd like to make that more community governed over the next few months. And um, we plan to resume our community meetings monthly every November. So we'll be sending out those calendar uh, invites slash locations. Uh, so happy to, to see an expansion of this project. 
Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, Pixie has been doing some great work in moving forward and they are striving to increase the amount of participation and documentation that they have for the project. Does anybody have any open questions for them on the call? Uh, Zane, a couple of uh, things I didn't we didn't talk about uh, the other day. Uh, so, uh, you know, the calendar, when you do the calendar, just make sure it gets added to the CNCF calendar too. Uh, that would be one. Yeah. The other one would be uh, like when you start writing down things. Uh, if we, I don't know if we talked about. So please uh, uh, talk to the tag uh, contributor strategy to uh, get their you know view on like what you're writing up uh, in terms of governance. Uh, that's going to be very critical. Um, I think we talked about security too, right? Uh, writing down the security processes that you already follow so people get a sense of how you do things and what they can expect from you if there is a problem right so uh, those are the like three things that came to my mind sounds good yep that sounds good and we have some security reports that uh for the pixie project that we plan to release uh so they're just going through legal review on our side but we plan to release those shortly okay thank you Anyone else? Okay, thank you so much, Pixie, for coming and talking. Uh, up next is CNI Genie. Do we have any folks from CNI Genie on the call? Hi, yeah. Uh, my name is Vinay, uh, Vinay Kulkarni, and uh, I work for a company called FutureWay Technologies, which is a subsidiary of Huawei. Um, and uh, CNI Genie, this is uh, this project had been uh, in the back burner for a while, for quite some time due to staffing issues since the 2019 uh, government restrictions came down with the, for the parent company, and they had to cut staff to uh, manage the project budget budgeting based on the progress that they were going to make after that. But now it looks like uh, they asked us to take it over. In all fairness, they asked us to take it over in last one year or so. Uh, it's been, but we haven't had the bandwidth to, uh, you know, uh, give attention to it. Given all the other things that were going on, we recently hired a new person who uh, joined us a couple of weeks ago. So I'm hoping to get a reboot on this project. I think the need for this project is there uh, in the sense that uh, there isn't very many solutions out there that does uh, multi-home networking. And uh, we have a, another project that we have been working on. We presented recently uh, uh, in various conferences. And I think the technology that's based on XTP is really solid uh, and scalable. So we're hoping to bring that uh, with the native isolation. Uh, this is some of the ideas that I have given, uh, put down over there in the annual review. Uh, the, main, uh, the main idea is to uh, integrate the work that we've done in that with CNI Genie and then add some of the newest uh, uh, the CNI solutions that are out there, support them like Cilium. This is one of the very popular uh, solution out there. And then uh, essentially reboot it over the next one year or so. So we're gonna start doing the routine, regular community meetings. And uh, as soon as our staffing is done and we're gonna have there, I think there's another uh, a university in China, which is potentially, uh, there are researchers there who might who are already working on this project uh, and they might contribute to this. We haven't worked out the staffing yet. Uh, it depends on what their contribution interests are. They, they look to generate papers out of it. And uh, we wanna use this for more for production. So, um, the points that I mentioned there are pretty much, I think the bottom line is that, yeah, we want to uh, uh, continue uh, this project. We want, now we want, we're staffing up. And as we get more traction and see how it goes, uh, we'll probably, uh, obviously we want to get external contributors and make it a real, you know, beehive, uh, but that's going to be a little while, I believe. So it's going to take a little while. Uh, we're going to take a few small steps here, as you said, and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, any questions the TOC might have as far as the our plan goes? Uh, Matt was doing this, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see Matt on the. Uh, he's here. Matt he's is just figuring out a mute. Okay. You must be fighting his mute button. Yeah, he's fighting his mute button. I can tell. Go ahead. You know, Matt. no, I, I had unplugged my laptop from my normal microphone, and when I plugged it back in, Zoom decided not to switch back. Uh, so it was just a microphone. Oops. 
the uh, I don't really have any other questions because they were they were covered. I mean, CNI Genie um, kind of started to stall for a while. It looks like it's getting reinvigorated in life. Um, there's a roadmap with plans around what's going to happen and intent. So I don't really have any other questions. Yeah, uh, thanks, Matt. So yeah. I, I do want to share something here. So Vinay is, has more patience than me, and he's been working on a feature in uh, Kubernetes that has taken longer than any of the things that I've had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, vertical <laughs> auto scaling. So, uh, you know, thanks for your patience. Uh, yeah, I, I, I took the crown from you on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, thanks a lot for that. And I'm sure uh, your guidance is going to help here. So one question like uh, I wanted to ask was you were talking about the technology itself, the eBPF, XD, XDP itself. But yeah. uh, do you have a sense of like what use cases that you're going to start with? Like when the new people come in, like do you want to do exactly what they were doing before or um, go to a smaller use case like you were saying? Yeah, the first use case is essentially bring uh, Cilium. That should be a relatively easy thing to do for the new persons who is coming in and wrapping up. Uh, add Cilium, uh, you know, and to do end-to-end -end testing, make sure that it works in isolation. And I think the next, uh, the big thing that I really want to do is uh, take our uh, eBPF, the XTP architecture that we have, which natively provides isolation. Today, when you, I think this came about, the idea came about from one of the talks that I uh I listened to in KubeCon EU. This was, uh, I believe, IKEA was trying to use Cilium and Multus, and they mentioned a bunch of issues that they ran into. And one of the things they were uh, talking about in that was they want to have multi-home networking, each of them in their own isolated networks. This mm -hmm. is something you could do with any other uh, provider, but you may have to use uh, network policies that if you're using the same provider. In our case, we do that by uh, at, the, at the packet layer, we use the uh, Geneve isolation, Geneve as the overlay, and then we use the VNIs for isolation. So, and we have uh, a demo of that working for a new architecture that we've been working on, where uh, multiple, uh, it's a Kubernetes, you, you take a Kubernetes cluster and then re-architect it so that you have one API server uh, talking to, uh, today you have one API server, it has a bunch of worker nodes. What if you had multiple API servers sharing those worker nodes? Now each of these API servers is its own tenant partition. And that's where our solution works very well. Uh, I don't think there's any other CNI solution that's, and our solution is not, a, it's not commercial, as you know. It's more of a, a prototype. The, we don't have the staffing here to do commercial stuff, we do a R&D. And then if it becomes a strong need for the parent company, they do it, they have the staffing to do it. Uh, but our idea is to essentially present the technology and then get uh, collaborators, contributors in uh, to work with. So it's an ecosystem project essentially. So that that use case, I believe uh, this can be a very good candidate to solve that, uh, uh, you know, provide natively isolated multi-home multi networking to put it in one line. Okay. Sounds good, thanks a lot. Thanks. I have a question. So um, do you have any performance data when you use the uh, eBPF SDP compared with the Linux uh, Linux uh, um, network stack? So we don't have uh, published numbers. What we did do last, late last year was we uh, tried our uh, the Mesa project. It's called Project Mesa. And we tried that uh, with uh, using a simple IPERF test. On a one gig, uh, we were able to do better than Cilium. We still do better than Cilium in a couple of metrics like a TCP RR test. But what we did see was that when we go to like real line speed, like 10 gig NICs, which is what, what's common and it's going further further up now, uh, we were uh, we were capping out at 2.3, 2.56 gig or something. I investigated that and found that uh, the reason why that's happening is because uh, we use XDP uh, in the to uh, at the to terminate the uh, container connection. Like when the pod sends out traffic, it comes out and we convert it to XDP pack frame, and then we redirect it to the TX queue of the transmit NIC. That uh, involves a conversion from SKB to XDP. That is uh, an overhead. So we're looking at potential alternatives, redesigning the architecture a little bit, because in the past one year, when we started this project, we did not have anything that would give us something like XTP redirect, which you know shoots a packet from one uh, interface to another one. 
And in the last one year, I think the Cilium folks have added a few things like eBPF redirect peer. These are a few APIs which do what XDP redirect, redirect does. So we are hoping to use that and then uh, see if we can get a better performance on the TX side. Uh, but the main use case for this would be uh, isolation at this point uh, more than performance. Okay, thank you. Any other questions before we move on to Fluid? No? I know this is about more isolation and performance, but any comparison with using DPDK? I mean, no, we haven't. That avoids most of the uh, you know, Linux networking stack. Yeah, we haven't uh, done a comparison with DPDK. I, I would suspect that DPDK would pr probably perform a little bit better because uh, you're essentially taking the packet and putting it in user mode and processing it there. But then you also have the limitations of DPDK, right? It doesn't work everywhere. You need to have that SDK, you need to have that NIC, or you need to have that uh, techno the processor that works with it. I don't know no, all the no, limitations. No, 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 DPDK is more like a software library. Yeah. So it's yeah. got nothing to do with the NIC. It can work on any operating system okay. in the Linux space. But it's essentially avoiding your network stack. That's how Yeah, it, it. I think it avoids the kernel network stack because exactly. you're... Exactly. So yeah. I know I know about that. I haven't. We haven't had the chance to uh, do a comparison with DPDK. I suspect that DPDK will probably perform better than, better than XDP or eBPF in most cases but that's yet to be seen. The main place where it might come, uh, XTP might do better is when we get uh, uh, offload, uh, you know, offload ecosystem is still uh, in, in its very infancy. Uh, eBPF offload, there is not a lot of NICs out there. There's one Netronome, which we tried out for some time last year, and we ran into several issues. Uh, Netronome, uh, on paper says they do eBPF offload, but when you try, when you go near it and then take a closer look, it doesn't support uh, uh, XTP re redirect. It does not support tail calls, which is some of the things that we were using. So uh, there are limitations to that. But while it's too early to say there might be some, I just had a, a call with an, uh, with the CTO of another company who's working on uh, HXTP, which is hardware XTP offload. That was yesterday. So I'm digesting the information I got there is potential for uh, offloaded XDP to, you know, give, uh, uh, perform on par with yeah, what, okay. yeah, yeah. So, but that might be, you know, we're talking years, maybe, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it, it's Thank not gonna you. happen. Yeah, so there are, there is some things coming, but we don't I know see. where that'll. Thank you so much for all of that additional information. For folks that have more questions, I would recommend that you file issues with the project so that the discussion can take place in a recorded location and be shared with everyone else. Thank you again. Um, you. Next up is Fluid. Are there any project members from Fluid on the call that would like to talk about the project? Um, if there's no one, I can go through this, Emily. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Um, so Fluid provides um, Kubernetes native um, distributed data sets orchestrator for data intensive applications. Uh, it is going very well. The project is very healthy and uh, steady. It has very healthy and steady co contributions. Uh, it has, you know, bi-weekly um, community meetings consistently, uh, has five maintainers, four committers, and nine, nine new adopters um, last year, a total is 15, and has two releases, and uh, the maintainers committees come from um, uh, not just one company, I think at least uh, four or five different companies. Um, it has, you know, um, uh, several um, big features planned, and also they, they are thinking of adding more uh, documentation and uh, to make sure it has good maintenance of the website. Um, it intends to remain a uh, Sandbox project, so it's not ready to apply for incubation yet. Um, they are trying to um, get more committers, contributors, and users, and then they will uh, consider applying um, for the incubation project. Um, so they are asking CNCF, uh, similar to other projects, to increase um, promotion of the project and basically more channels to advocate their uh, project. And they would like to collaborate with other projects in the CNCF and even if it could be out of CNCF. And um, also they want some, um, would like some technical writing support for documents. OK, 
Okay. Does anybody have any questions? We will endeavor to try to answer them here. No? Okay, next up is Andrea. Is there? Uh, anyone, yeah, anyone is from there, Andrea? Yeah. Anyone from Andrea on the call? No? No. All right, Dems, you're up. Yeah, um, so Andrea uh, was uh, you know, originally a VMware Tanzu project and uh, that got contributed to CNCF. I think they're doing all right um, in terms of like contributions and adoption. Um, the, the, you know, they have the usual issues that we see in other projects, which is, uh, hey, all the maintainers are from one company or you know, the founding company. So they are trying to figure out like how they can um, you know, increase uh, not just contributions, but also uh, add maintainers. So governance was something that they are looking at um, to do better. Um, they, I don't think it was mentioned here, but uh, they've started like new sub projects as well, um, based on Antria. Um, so using Antria as a as a layer, um, you know, as underlying uh, component um, to, and they've added uh, some con contributors and maintainers there as well. So overall, they are doing okay. Uh, what they need right now is. Uh, Hey, uh, what do we need to do for um, be, uh, start starting the process for an incubation project? And one of the things that had held them back before was, uh, who do you consider as end users, um, you know, of um, a project, right? Uh, so in the earlier definition used to be very rigid, and I think Emily, you ended up uh, tweaking that quite a bit to see how we could get additional signals uh, from different types of uh, folks uh, and not just uh, the way it was worded before. So I, um, so based on that, I think they, they are kind of ready for this. Um, I might have to look at how they are doing security. I don't know if they have talked to tax security yet. Um, that might be something that we might have to get them to do. Um, so uh, security and governance, uh, if, uh, if they get to a point where we are happy with those two things, then I think uh, we should consider them for incubation. Uh, that, that, is, that was my feedback uh, reading through, uh, you know, the updates uh, that they posted as well as, uh, you know, the updates that I got from Dave as well. Any questions here? Back to you. Okay. And at teams, which other companies are contributing? Um, so one example would be, uh, I think, um, uh, I forget whether it is Microsoft or Google. They, uh, well, I think it was Google. Um, Google was using, um, uh, all of, for their Windows nodes, they're using Antria, for example. So, and they got a lot of collaboration through that mechanism. Um, I can go look at, uh, uh, so what I think one place what they mentioned was when somebody comes to them, they'll stay for a couple of, uh, you know, PRs and issues, and then they go away, right? Like, because, uh, you know, they come here because something that they are trying to do is not working. And when they are happy, then they move on, right? Uh, right. So that that is the kind of challenge that they are facing because, you know, at some point you need to get maintainers. You don't, you don't want people who are just doing features, right? Uh, so uh, that is the usual issue. Thank you. Thanks, Sims. Um, next up, we have telepresence. Is there anyone from telepresence on the call? Um, I'm not familiar with that. If you want to actually just give me a little bit of time. No? Okay. And the TOC representative that worked on their annual review? Amy or Dems, do you remember who that was? Uh, I don't believe we had anyone for this one. Okay. All right. Well, I will go through it. So telepresence um, focus this time uh, was around compatibility with service meshes, um, working through and emulating pass through for all the features that are being exposed by the various cloud cloud providers that are out there. Um, 
The traffic agents, they're working on making sure that it does not disturb the existing network policies and checks, including providing network policies for system admins and specific uh, constrained firewall requirements and instructions to configure load balancers. Um, telepresence must, uh, they're also looking to have it easier to deploy in the context of large clusters with multiple different kinds of applications. Um, they want it to be easy to set up the Argo CD deployment of tele telepresence, for example, and cluster admins should have clarity on which configuration levers that they can tweak as well as the ability to push cu cluster wide telepresence configurations to users machines. Um, they have a few asks of the CNCF. They're looking for expanding their user base with more contributors, um, tutorials, and improvement of the documentation. And they are looking to welcome contributors who have expertise with complex environments or specific use cases and share how they got telepresence to work for their particular use case, integrating with other tools, especially on cloud native ones. Does anyone have any questions associated with telepresence? Uh, so one uh, one other thing that I wanted to say here was like, just like any other sandbox projects, they are having the same issues around, hey, uh, how do we increase our uh, contributor base? Uh, how do we publish tutorials? How, how do we uh, talk to uh, and improve engagement with other CNCF projects? Uh, so, uh, you, know, you know, that trend is there, right? Like, so it's the same set of problems that they're facing here as well. Um, then the other one, uh, I think, uh, Amy, you touched on it already, is like uh, f it, it, when uh, the happy path, everything is working. Like if it's this, uh, if somebody is doing something different from the happy path that they have documented, then they run into trouble. So um, that is why they are requesting, you know, people to uh, try out telepresence in complicated deployment scenarios. So they get feedback on that. So one thing I had in mind here was uh, for these folks to um, somehow talk to end user community uh, to get that kind of feedback. Um, maybe they can do a survey or something uh, to uh, and engage somehow with the end user community to uh, see if uh, folks are using telepresence and how to get uh, enough feedback so they can update their docs and whatnot. Yep, makes complete sense. Yeah, anytime you, we're struggling with project adoption, it's usually the edge cases that catch everybody and, and inhibit that growth rate. So if you have experience with telepresence or not yet, recommend trying it out or any of the annual sandbox projects that we were covering here today and then providing feedback to the projects via an issue or um, reaching out to them in their corresponding Slack channels. Any other questions are on telepresence? No. Okay, moving on, Wasm Edge runtime. Do we have anyone from the project on the call that wishes to talk about the project? No. And is the TOC sponsor? Harry. Harry. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Hey. Right, so um, for this project, I think um, overall it's on the right track. It's growing fast. It's GitHub metrics is really healthy, pretty active. And I also checked these contributions and they are doing really great on, in, in, in general. Um, I, but I do have two suggestions uh, regarding to this project. I think the first is I noticed that majority of the maintainers actually are almost all the maintainers as well as the contributors are from a single company. Uh, which is, I think, still need to improve. The second part is uh, regarding to, to the adoption. Um, you know, WebAssembly is essentially a cutting edge technology, so we should not expect it adopt super at a super large scale. But I do suggest that this project work on, for for example, maybe publish some uh, user studies, especially those if those blog posts can help people understand how this project is helping them adopting WebAssembly because this project position itself like um, it, it's well it, it, it tend to it intend to make you develop deploy run WebAssembly applications faster easier it has also have some killer features like um, a very fast virtual machine for WebAssembly I think all of those technologies are good 
but I would like to learn how they are helping real world customers or real world users. I think this is another area in, in terms of adoption that can improve. And not just the, not, not super large scale adoption, but more like more examples, helping people understand how this project can benefit you can benefit other people. Yeah, that, that are two suggestions I can give to this project. Awesome. Anyone have any questions? I think another um, thing is um, how this project compare with other projects uh, in solving the similar um, problems in the similar areas. That would be helpful for you know, for adoption or for users. Yeah, I, I agree. And also how it, this project actually potentially can work with other member assembly domain projects. I do see there are small overlaps, but I think in most cases they can work together. So it all, it's just as I said, it would be really be great if they can publish something, um, talk about that. Yeah, Anything right. else? Yeah, here Ricardo? I have questions. Yeah, so does the plan for the project to go into incubation? That's, uh, that's our goal right now? or? Or they don't have a goal yet. I, I do see they have a goal to move to incubation. I think their timeline is I think end of this year, but my personal um, suggestion is it may be a little bit fast. Um, not not very practical considering for the first issue as I said the, the maintainers are still from the single company and the adoption. We need to see a more you know, more um, activities and improvement in adoption part. So I, th I don't think the end of this year is a practical timeline. Yeah. Thanks, makes sense. Okay, anything else? No, all right, fine, Yard. Is there anyone from the project on the call that wishes to talk about it? If not, we can hand it over to Ricardo. Yeah. I don't see anyone, so I'll take it. Um, so uh, Vineyard is an in-memory uh, immutable data manager to help with the uh, abstracting kind of zero copy in memory sharing. And it's used for uh, distributed data, um, tasks, uh, graph analytics, numerical computing, scientific computing, machine learning. Uh, the project has seen uh, quite a lot of activity in the last year since it joined uh, Sandbox um, um, earlier last year. Uh, so there were end users reporting adoption in, uh, in the areas of scientific computing uh, research facilities, I think one in France and also FinTech. Uh, these reports included one in production, a couple uh, moving uh, to production and others in testing phase. Um, so one of the goals of the project is to continue uh, focusing on this and uh, improving end user adoption. Uh, the GitHub activity shows and their stats show uh, quite significant growth, um, especially in the number of individual contributors uh, in total, uh, individual contributors, and the number of uh, organizations uh, doing contributions as well. Um, the main feature that they highlight uh, in the project was the added integration uh, supporting uh, Airflow. And this is in addition to other integrations they already have for uh, machine learning, uh, things like TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, and others, and also Dask. So that's quite interesting. And now they added support for Airflows. Um, they mentioned in their uh, requests for the CNCF uh, more opportunities to introduce the project to a broader set of end users and increase adoption. So this was already mentioned a couple of times today. I think it's a, it's a common one. Uh, they specifically mentioned uh, the fact that uh, they submitted a few proposals for KubeCon and those were rejected. So uh, they see this as an opportunity to get more visibility. So I took a couple of notes on, uh, on uh, looking at the project as well. Um, I think the added maintainers are, are really good, but uh, they are still all from the same organization, which is Alibaba. So there, uh, a bit more diversity will help the project in the future. Um, this should be uh, one of the focus, I guess. Uh, the other one is uh, the the fact that they mentioned that they don't uh, want to apply immediately for incubation. 
they want to focus on uh, improving the, the set of end users and the option they have before applying, which uh, I agree, which uh, sounds like a good one to, to do first. Um, and then in addition to what they mentioned uh, for improving uh, visibility and adoption, they mentioned KubeCon proposals. So they're maybe uh, having shared proposals from the project and some selected end users uh, will kind of make the proposals more, uh, a bit stronger. So maybe that's something to, to look at. And the other one is that uh, on the website is not uh, immediately clear which use cases the project uh, focuses on. So making it more clear and publishing more case studies uh, would probably help with um, with uh, the project as well, um, or at least the perception of the project from, from potential end users. So I think that's all I have actually. Okay, are there any questions? No? Okay, I think that wraps up all of the sandbox reviews, Amy. It does indeed. Um, and like at this point in time, we normally move for a vote. So here, I will go ahead and call a vote over in chat. Votes to accept. Wait a second to be able to make sure that I'm getting everybody in here. Oh, uh, please just TOC a vote. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm missing one. Aaron, Aaron, I might be missing you. And Kathy as well? Yeah, Kathy and Aaron, please come on in. Got Aaron's, got, got Kathy's. Kathy. All right, these pass, we can move on. Thank you, hooray. Um, projects applying to move levels, uh, any updates here? I believe Spiffy and Spire have already graduated. Uh, give it 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Be close, Look. they have been fairly buried. I met with them once, but I don't think they've, they've put in the effort okay. yet. We'll just push that down a little ways. Okay. Uh, I can speak up on Flux real quick. They are ready to go into public comment period as soon as the freeze is lifted. Excellent. Um, let us track for being able to have that be a November 1st. So I'll put that on my minders. Um, all right, any other updates in here? All right, my last thing is the community awards are now open for nominations, and I've made sure that all Hold the forms on. are actually accepting things. Yeah, go ahead. Dems. Uh, Amy, <laughs> is this, since we talked about freeze, uh, if you go back one slide, I want to make sure that people see this TOC issue. Uh, yes, I was going to put that at the end. I was yeah. going to put the, I was going to go like the, the note is basically like the, the nominations are open, but uh, that is that is all of my note. So, yeah. Dims, go ahead. Um, so, um, the TOC issues 918, um, you know, uh, there, this was the first time we tried out the freeze and we saw some edge cases uh, as usual, right? Um, and so we want to iterate. So we are collecting feedback from, uh, you know, how we, uh, how, you know, what are the kind of things that we talked about um, on this time for the freeze uh, and then how do we do better for the next time? So uh, if you have any feedback, um, please, uh, you know, go to this issue and chime in. There's a lot of feedback there already, so we have to make sure that we take into account, um, you know, all the things that people have said there. Uh, so please Ricardo? go look, read, and uh, send us feedback. Ricardo? No, I was just clicking the wrong place, sorry. <laughs> okay, you didn't actually have anything, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I would also add that for those of you that are interested in understanding more about the level of effort involved in going through due diligence, due diligence, refresh, understanding the activities that the talk par uh, participates in during those processes for graduation or moving levels, 
the thread on that issue is an excellent resource to understand all of the things that take place that are not otherwise documented in the TOC repository at this current point in time. So I encourage everyone to take a look. Um, if you are interested in pursuing um, becoming a TOC member in the future. This is a good visibility into some, even just a small fraction of the work that goes into the uh, work that the TOC um, conducts for the foundation. Back to you, Amy. No, that's perfect. Um, uh, that actually leads me towards a coming attraction. Um, the the coming attraction for TOC elections, we'll be talking about this KeepCon North America, but the nomination cycle kicks off in January for TOC and seating um, in the end of February. So okay. if like people, people are interested in that, that's coming up. Um, and again, my last piece is like, if you have people that you want to nominate, please nominate them. Um, we will be closing uh, nominations next Friday. Um, that is the 30th um, so that we get a chance to be able to make sure that all of these are together for KubeCon North America. This is a great way to highlight key folks within your communities, within your ecosystem that are contributing, that are writing documentation. Um, so I encourage everyone, if you can and are able to, please nominate someone from the community. Anything else on the community awards? Nope, that was it. We now actually have like, some time for open questions. Not all at once. Yeah. What's funny about that thing? Well, if there's no questions yet, I do want to point out to everyone on the call that there were quite a few themes associated with several asks of the CNCF, primarily around getting um, new contributors and increasing awareness and visibility of a lot of these projects, specifically around documenting use cases um, and studies associated with the functionality feature set. Um, of these individual projects. So if you are a potential sandbox project on the call or, or watching after the fact, take heed, these are common problems. Um, for those of you that were part of the annual review, recommend reaching out to the contributor strategy or checking out the wonderful documentation and resources that they already have available as a potential avenue of increasing your contributorship and working with um, other tags and groups and other projects to increase increase contributorship and visibility of the projects. Any questions? All right, we will consider this closed. We'll send everybody back into their day. It's good to see all of you. Thank you, Emily, for hosting. Yeah, Thanks, have a wonderful you. day. Hooray, thanks Thank all. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye.